name of it. Uh, I never saw the ovens or the chambers or the gas chambers or any of this sort of stuff that was there. I did see people who have seen it. And I did collect photographs, actual photographs that men would take pictures and give me. And again, I don't know what happened to the pictures. I had them at one time, they were very gory and were not pleasant. Uh, I saw those pictures when I was a child. Yes. I don't know what happened to them. I believe Paul like, has those pictures. It's just like the picture of Mussolini. I yeah. couldn't tell you where it is yeah. today. I know I've got it somewhere, but where? Uh, you don't... It, it's nice to have as a souvenir, yeah. but it proved no practical value as such. We, we went subsequently back to Germany in 47. and had a three-year tour in the Army of Occupation in Frankfurt, during which time I participated in the Berlin airlift from day one to the last day. I had a, uh, a labor company that was composed of uh, displaced persons from Poland, Lithuania, Estonia, Lithuania, all up in there. The, the, the nations that really were instrumental in spearheading the move away from communism and communist Russia at that time. And they, uh, they were nice men. Many of them I still remember very fond members to this day. This was, in, in, during that time, in November of 1948, we had the pleasure of bringing into the world our youngest son, you. <laughs> well, tell us about your first son. First son was born in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And that year was 1947. That was in 47. You were born in November 1948. Right. And uh, I hate to see you two men get old. <laughs> There is a story, uh, I, I don't remember you telling me any stories around Paul's birth that was particularly humorous. Oh, yes, yes, yes. If you would tell us one of those in a story around my birth that was humorous. Well, uh, Paul was born in June of 1947 in, in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And we were young, we didn't know. Uh, they, all the women around helped as much as they could. And our very dear friends, even to this day, the Lawrence Freemans, Lawrence and Rachel, uh, Rachel babysat with me, and she, Paula was in the, the ward having the baby and the contractions, and she would let out a scream, and Rachel, to pacify me, took me outside, and we looked for four-leaf clovers. And Rachel found a double handful, and I have yet to find my first one. I went to bed. I stayed in bed three days from that ordeal. Uh, you contrast that to when you were born. And uh, your mother says, it's time to go. She had sat around and dilated all day, and something we never do, we drank hot tea. Uh -huh. And I took her to the 97th General Hospital and I asked the nurse incidentally she knew a shortcut she could take a shortcut to the maternity ward and she took that shortcut and the nurse met us at the door and I said is there anything more I can do and she looked at me and says don't you think you've done enough <laughs> I love that story <laughs> And I said, good, I'll be at the bowling alley. <laughs> and so you bowled through the whole thing. I bowled through the whole thing. She, I didn't bowl good, but I wasn't going to go through one of them three days in bed stories again. <laughs> she called me about midway second game and says, come on back, coward, he's here. <laughs> uh, but our boys were, were real precious to us. And... Uh, we came back to the States and I was signed several different 
places and then went on another tour to, to France this time, Poitiers, France, in the province of Vienne, uh, and had three years there. And I got to where I could babble French like a native, just about. I thought I could. Two things had got in the way of that. One was, before the families came over, we were doing a little private flying. And I decided I wanted to try a glider. And I had the chief pilot, Chef Pilot, tell me what I had to do. I thought I understood it. But on that first flight, all they wanted, they had a Jeep with a high-speed winch on it at the other end of the field. And it's just like a slingshot. It would sling the glider up into the air. And this was much cheaper than having a plane tow you up. But on that first flight, what you're supposed to do is go up and come down like that. Well, when the darn thing started off, it jerked you from here to here. And all you can see is sky. And I went like that, and I glanced down at the airspeed indicator, and it said zero. And so I said, I know I have to do something, and I don't know what I got to do because at that it's going to stall them. So I ducked the stick forward, which meant to put it to die, from, from here to here. Well, <coughs> then I could count every blade, blade of grass there was down there. And I got out of that thing. I landed it just hump, 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 and I was on the ground. Didn't hurt nothing. <coughs> and, uh, I said, I think I better get some Frenchman that can speak English better than I can speak French and go through this thing again. So that's what I did. I made a, a second uh, jump. I went all the way around the traffic pattern and came in like I wanted to do the first time. And I left that glider and I ain't set foot in one sense. <laughs> the second time that my translation got the better of me, we had rented a big chateau where White McGinnis and Nell had one side of it with their two boys. We had the other side with you and Paul. Uh, came one of them's birthday and Nell says, well, to teach him some responsibility, I want to get him a couple of ducks. Well, they're all four boys about the same age. And says, I can't get him ducks unless I get the other one ducks. And I said, well, Mel, that ain't going to work because if your youngins get ducks and my youngins don't have ducks, uh, that ain't going to work. So if you're going to get yours two little ducks apiece, then I'll have to get my two. Keep peace in the family. Keep them from one another's throats, you know. So we had this French maid that we'd hired. And as try as I could, I could not come up with the French word for duck. So the conversation went something like this. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Good morning. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, mademoiselle, oui, monsieur. Vous connaissez Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, oui, oui, quack, quack. I said, bon, good. Je désire, I want, catch, petite, baby. Comprenez-vous, baby? Oh, oui, oui, monsieur. Your desire, catch, petite, baby, quack, quack. Oui, the mom at ten, in the morning. In the morning, I noticed she was coming up the hill on her bicycle, and she was obviously struggling. She had four of the biggest, deadest ducks. Had caught and wrung every one of them's neck. 
Well, you know, I don't eat fowl. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat turkey.